The ancient Romans were obsessed with the sense of themselves as free men. It was they and their republic that had established a land of the free and a home of the brave. The traditional ruling classes especially despised anyone who reeked of kingship, mistrusted any breed of populism that might bypass the traditional levers of power and lay claim to ultimate authority in spite of the republic's hard-won democratic and social norms. Julius Caesar was one such. Think Donald Trump, but with a genuine military genius, a murderous ruthlessness, and the actual balls to see his particular brand of authoritarian coup through. He was a man to keep an eye on from the beginning. The scion of an ancient but impoverished family, Caesar had amassed an enormous debt through such hijinks as hiring a private navy to capture and crucify a clan of pirates who had taken him hostage at 25 years of age, and by astounding the Roman crowds by fitting out his gladiators in silver armour. Yet it was his political campaigning some 15 years later that won for himself first the most powerful office in Rome, the consulship, and second, the seething enmity of Rome's traditional political elites. They feared Caesar's popularity and his recklessness. And they had a point. As consul, he had his allies pour a bucket of shit over his chief political rival, beat up the man's bodyguards, and strong-arm him into retirement. Such outrageous and, incidentally, highly illegal manoeuvrings paved the way for a series of laws designed solely for his own benefit, the erasure of his debts, and finally, a lucrative and utterly scandalous five-year term as governor of southern Gaul. Luckily, the appointment also came with an immunity from prosecution. Thus, after his term as governor had ended, and the dust had settled on the small matter of his shameful, and also illegal, destruction of Gaul, a genuine holocaust in which it was said one million were murdered and a further one million enslaved, Caesar was left with a choice. Re-enter Rome alone and face endless and deserved litigation, or at the head of a battle-hardened legion and face civil war. He chose the latter, and on the 10th of January 49 BC, Duly led his army across the Rubicon, a small river that marked the traditional northern boundary of Italy, and invaded the capital. The die had been cast. Thanks for listening. If you like this, subscribe and hit the notification bell.